Oh bro, you're gonna That looks amazing! No, that looks, looks so good, look at that. Look at how sick that looks. First go. Okay, so around six months ago, I created a, a video about steel wool photography uh, with Sam. And uh, basically we went out, did some steel wool photography, and the shots, they were okay. Uh, we struggled to find some decent locations. Um, and I was actually out shooting the other night uh, where we stumbled across a really cool location and I thought it would make a sick spot for some still wall photography. So tonight uh, we're just waiting for it to get dark now but later on we're gonna head out uh, and see if we can one up uh, our shots from last time. So let's just get straight into the video. Okay, so we have just arrived at the location for the shoot. We've actually run into a huge problem. Essentially, when I came last time, this whole thing was covered in water. Uh, and basically, because it's a weekend, they don't turn the fountains on. It's only during the week. So, it's literally completely dried out. Um, so we're just trying to think what we can do. The only thing we thought of, Sam <laughs> has a bottle of water and it's kind of given us the idea that we could essentially just cover the whole thing obviously not of this bottle but it's not enough we're going to be doing a few trips to the water fountain and the shops and do our best to sort of scatter water because the reflection is what's going to make this picture so we're going to go to the shops uh, and do our best but hopefully it should work out yeah. Okay, so we just went to the shop and bought a ton of water. We have like a good nine liters of water. So <laughs> we're gonna do our best and hopefully we can make uh, a bit of a scene, a bit of a splash. I feel like we're gonna need a lot of water. What the hell, let's just do it. Reflective, oh yeah, that's a sick reflection. Jeez. So that is seven litres so far. I think that's more than enough. We only have two litres left uh, and we don't want the water to dry out. It takes a while to set up the, the steel wool as well. So I think best bet is get it bashed out before we get told off because um, it doesn't look great doing this. <laughs> it's raining, <laughs> bro. I actually can't believe what's happening. <laughs> as soon as we just stop doing that, it's actually raining. It's literally <laughs> raining. And it says that London is due for 40 minutes of rain. Oh my god. Oh, we just did all that. Wow. All right, so just to give you guys a quick rundown of gear, it's actually kind of minimal. Uh, first thing you want is a lighter. I'd recommend getting one where you can, like a long lighter, where you can actually poke it through. It's much more useful than having one of the small handheld ones. Uh, steel wool, you want the ultra fine grade zero steel wool. Any other steel wool is unlikely to work. This steel wool gives off the most amount of sparks. Uh, just get uh, a standard household whisk. Uh, something like this would be perfect with a little clip on the end so that you can hook on uh, your rope. Uh, or in this case, we've got a cheeky little uh, pink fluffy dog lead. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The setup is nice and minimal. First thing you're gonna wanna do is clip your whisk uh, with your lead like this. So essentially we're just gonna be swinging this around. Uh, then you want to Get your steel wool and just unravel it and just get like a, a healthy amount of steel wool. This will do and then just rip it off. And you kind of want to separate it a bit just so it, the, uh, the individual strands are a little bit loose. Then put it up into a ball like this and literally just get your whisk, open it up and just shove it inside here. And what we're going to do is we get our lighter. The reason why we have a bigger lighter is so we can literally poke it in instead of having a small one. We can just literally get our lighter and then just light the oh, shit. <laughs> I don't mean to do that, but you get the point. Okay, so we've set the camera up on the tripod in a portrait orientation. 
uh, and I framed up St Paul's with a lovely reflection. Uh, I've got it set to a 10 second shutter speed as that will give me plenty of time to spin it around and create a cool pattern. Uh, we've had to boost the aperture up to f9 but that is actually going to mean we're going to get a really nice crispy shot uh, and ISO is set to 100. I've also got it set to a two second timer so that when you press the shutter two seconds will go by and then the shutter will go off. This will just reduce any shake uh, and we won't get a blurry image. Uh, so I'm going to leave Sam to press the shutter for me uh, and he's going to let me know where to go and I'm going to go make uh, a cool pattern with this. Okay, we're live. Press it. Okay, so we've pretty much exhausted all of our steel water. I only had one packet, and it actually goes really quick because you end up taking loads of attempts. Um, but we tried out a few different things. We tried out, uh, we tried out a few different patterns. Uh, we experimented with the NAN lights, which Sam has. Uh, we actually put Sam in the middle of the frame, and we put like a blue light around him to kind of highlight him as a subject. And then my idea is, is that we're gonna Photoshop the sparks around him. So there's gonna be two shots making up one shot. That's my plan. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly how I go about editing this uh, in a sec when we go and edit the photos. The only thing I would change is having more steel wool so you can experiment with loads of different patterns. But other than that, zero complaints from me, sick location, the reflection held through, it kind of stopped raining as well so we had a nice reflection to play with. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm just going to head straight back to the uh, editing uh, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how we go about doing it. Okay, so that pretty much wrapped up the end of that shoot. Uh, I didn't really get that many shots because we were sort of limited to the amount of steel wool that we had. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, what we ended up getting up to shot wise. Uh, so my idea for this shot was that I was going to have two photos making the final shot. The first shot was going to be uh, a shot of all the steel wool, so in, in a cool pattern with like uh, the circle in the middle clear. Uh, and then uh, the second shot was going to be a picture of Sam using the blue lights to sort of backlight him. And then I was going to merge the two in Photoshop. So Sam was kind of in the middle of the circle of sparks. So this was the first shot here. It's a nice crispy shot of Sam. You can see where we've got the blue lights behind him. Uh, and then the second shots were these ones here. So you can see here we've got Sam in the middle and I'm just going to get rid of this one in Photoshop. Okay, so once we have our two shots, uh, we need to edit them both individually. Uh, I'm going to be using Lightroom for this. So uh, what I typically do is I just go through and apply one of my presets. Uh, but I've already edited this one, so it started off looking like this. And now I edit it, edited it to look like this. Uh, all I did really was I just applied one of my presets uh, as a kind of like a base. Uh, and then I just went through, uh, changed a few things. I kind of lifted up the shadows, uh, brought up the exposure a bit and dropped the highlights. And then we ended up with the final thing like this, adding a bit more clarity in the sky here. Uh, so that looks really nice and clean. All I did was I copied the settings from that first photo and just pasted them on here so that we've got a nice even uh, transition between the photos. Uh, and then all you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna uh, go back to our first one and then press command or control on your keyboard, click the second one, right click on both of these and hit edit as layers in Photoshop. Um, we're going to move over to Photoshop to kind of merge and blend uh, these two images together and it's a pretty straightforward process uh, if you shoot uh, the pictures appropriately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the spark layer uh, onto uh, on top to make it the primary layer uh, and then I'm gonna see if I can play with the blending modes uh, to see if we can make something work here I think we, we might be able to get away with this so if we hit the lighten uh, on the blending mode and then we're gonna create a layer mask and we make sure that we've clicked on the white part here on the layer mask and you're gonna hit B on your keyboard to create a brush so all we're gonna do we're gonna zoom in like this and we're gonna make sure that the uh, opacity is up at 100 
and that the black over here is the primary one. If it's if the white's there, just toggle that and you can make the black one the primary. And then we're just gonna rub away in the middle here so that uh, we can reveal Sam in the center of this circle. It's actually a really, really simple process. And I'm also gonna come down here in the reflection to similarly just clear that up a bit. You can see how sharp that is down there. I'm going to do the same on the bottom half of this reflection. I'm actually going to probably do the whole of this circle and then I'm going to smoothly go over here. So that's looking really nice. So if we zoom out, we can see how we've got Sam right in the middle here. You can see up here in the clouds um, that it's leaving like a nasty sort of uh, overexposed white marks. I'm just going to brush that out like that just by going over the clouds. And then once we are happy, all we have to do is hit Command S on our keyboard to save that layer. And then if we go back to Lightroom, uh, the file should automatically load. So you can see we've got Sam in the middle here uh, with all these sparks coming out. And I'm really happy with that final shot. Uh, and yeah, it's actually a really simple process. Uh, hopefully you guys can go away and try it. Uh, that'll be awesome. If you do go away and try it, uh, feel free to tag me in your results on Instagram. That'd be great. Uh, and yeah, I think still photography is something that you can really get creative with. Uh, so I'd highly encourage you guys to go out there. Uh, as I said, it's a really minimal setup, so there's nothing really stopping you. Uh, just play it safe. Uh, obviously, you're playing with fire, so do take precautions where necessary. And just to remind you guys that all of the images that you see on my page and on my YouTube have been edited with my presets, my Lightroom presets. I have just launched the website and they come in a pack of 25 individual presets. They also come with some additional uh, behind the scenes and tutorial videos. I think there's about five or six different ones on there. Uh, and also there's about 50 raw images of mine which you guys can practice editing on. And also once a month I'll be choosing one person who buys the presets uh, and we'll just go around London together on a night shoot or whatever. Uh, we'll just go and shoot together. But yeah, I won't take up any more of your time. I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video. If you did and if you are new here, please feel free to subscribe to my channel or like the video. That would really help me out. Uh, but with that all said and done, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.